All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? I wanted to cover five decks that actually are decent now that get some decent little upgrades, maybe even good upgrades, with Karlov Manor releasing, I guess, today or tomorrow, depending on whenever you see this. So let's hop into those decks and see what they are. Let's start with the Gruul aggro deck. Now, there's not a ton to say here. This is the low to the ground aggro you've seen. So nothing surprising here. You've got Cacophony Scamps, Monastery Swiss Spear, Picnic Ruiner, Questing Druid, Monstrous Rage, Tyvar Stand, Ancestral Anger, Audacity, Commando Faces Kakazan. These are kind of standard in pretty much every one of these lists. Uh, I will say, depending on what you're playing, sometimes the Tyvar Stands are giant gross. Uh, just sort of depends. I'm I'm a big fan of even just splitting those two and two because Giant Growth is pretty strong with Cacophony Scamp, uh, honestly. But there is one card that this deck gets that's brand new, and that's Fugitive Codebreaker. It's a two mana, two one with Prowess and Haste. It does have Disguise of six. However, it's reduced by one for every instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. Well, since we do have Monstrous Rage, Ancestral Anger, Tyvar stand like we do have some things that we could reduce this but regardless when it's turns faced up you discard your hand and you draw three cards it also has prowess on its own so the cool part about this card is that it can just be bigger whenever you're playing these other spells which is nice so if you want something early it does also have haste which is pretty sweet or you can have it be a 2-2 until later in the game and then you turn it up and you get to reload your hand which is something that can happen with this deck now how important is it when you already have the questing druid not sure but it is another good early creature to play and i don't really have a problem with it existing in this list so overall solid addition nothing else here really changes a lot on this list i think it's just mostly fine honestly i've seen a few versions of this that people have posted and they all kind of fall in the same space kind of the core cards are the same like i said it's tyvar stay and giant growth seem to be the difference uh, as far as lands you can play three or four Thran Portal. I think it just depends on how much you love Thran Portal. A lot of people try to even play none of them, but I, it's hard not to because you don't have a bunch of uh, non-tapped red-green lands that you can play early. So just, just one that I think you do get an upgrade from the Future of Codebreaker. So if you like playing this deck, that's a fun thing you can include. Now this one's one after my own heart, and this was what I think we called the Boros Big Damage deck at one time, or Big Boros Damage, I think is what we called it. But basically, the core of this deck is you get to play uh, O'Hare Ashnell, which was our impetus for playing this deck initially. Then playing some Kessig Flamebreaker. We have one copy of Urabrask. We are playing Heart Flame Duelist, which is really good for killing stuff, but also getting you another creature that's a 3-1, and then all your spells actually gain lifelink, which is pretty cool. We're playing a couple of Quintorius Khan because we do have some exiled cards we can play, one Chandra, a couple of Rins Resolve because getting more cards that we can play from exile, obviously good. We have a Commando Faces Kakazan and four Virtue of Courage. Now, the interesting thing here is the deck did get an upgrade by us getting to play four Lightning Helix. Now, we did make room for the Lightning Helix by removing one Chandra and I believe removed one Rins Resolve and a Lightning Strike. And I think that's all we did, but did get four Lightning Helix in here. What I like about this is the spell itself gains life, which is great. And it ups our number of instants that we can cast in different scenarios, which is good. The only thing about this that made it a little bit difficult is you possibly have to add more white lands. So we're now playing four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. However, we do have six that come into play tapped. So if you don't have either Sundown Pass or enough Restless Bivouac, feel free to cut one of those to play another plane straight up. Because I do think this is a deck that wants to have more land untapped than tap in the early stages. Possibly could remove a Restless Bivouac because you still have planeswalkers and burn damage to finish the control decks and that's generally where that card's going to be the best for you but yeah overall i think this deck was still good i'm actually building this in paper to play at some fnms and whatnot and uh standard showdowns so i think this is just going to be a fun one to have affordable realistically uh except for o'hare ashenel and urabrask as it turns out none of the cards in this deck tend to be very expensive so this is a pretty good one to build in paper or if you own some number of o'hare ashenels and urabrask already well, then you don't have to spend a lot to finish this deck off. So that's a pretty cool one. But this is one I do like the upgrade of Lightning Helix a lot. Next up, I want to talk about Pirates. Uh, this one gets a pretty interesting upgrade here because of a new card in Gleaming Gear Drake. Now, obviously, this isn't a pirate, so that comes with its own issues. 
But the fact that it cares about you sacrificing artifacts to get bigger is pretty sweet. When it enters the battlefield, it investigates, which means you get a clue anyway. And then every time you sacrifice an artifact, it gets a plus one, plus one. Well, of course, we have stuff like Spyglass Siren, which also is generating uh, maps that we can sacrifice. We also get bridges that can let us get uh, treasure. And then anytime you have a pirate come into the battlefield, you'll also get to make, actually when an artifact enters, excuse me, you do get another plus one, plus one on stuff. So we combine all of that with Roaming Throne, which is super nice. So this lets you get all those extra triggers off of your pirates. You can't use this on the gear drake, but you do also get rabbit battery, which can give something haste. It also counts as an artifact entering the battlefield, uh, playing the standard fare of things like staunch crewmate and subterranean schooner. Uh, I will say Yeoman 5 brought up an interesting thing uh, that I wasn't doing, but I kind of stole this idea, which is playing mind link mech, especially if you're already going to be playing rabid battery and stuff. It just makes sense because now you can just give it haste and attack, which is pretty sweet. So I like a lot of what's going on here. Uh, this is overall a pretty solid build. I mean, you still have a fair amount of pirates with four bridges, four captain storm, three goblin tomb raider, again, playing roaming throne. And then you have Spyroglass Siren and Crewmate. So you're not really missing any pirates overall, but you did add in a way to come over the top. So you have an additional flyer plus the Mind Link mechs, which are also flying. And then you have uh, Witch Talker Frenzy as a way to clean stuff up. The only thing that changes with this because we are adding in stuff like Drake is you don't really want to play four Cavern Souls anymore. So you're down to three. So that part kind of sucks a little bit, but overall should still be fine and should work out well for what you're trying to do. All right, so this one's one that does include a fun card here, and we're gonna talk about Naya tokens. Uh, not a huge surprise here on this one on the things we're gonna be playing, but we did get a couple of additions from the new set. Now, the interesting thing here is we do have two get lost, which we need to have some removal, but we do have a couple other things now because we do get the use of Lightning Helix again. I think you're gonna see this in a lot of decks that are playing Boros Colors. Just a good all-around card and can buy you time against Mono Red, which is always good. But then we're playing Join the Dance and Resolute Reinforcement. And we're just going to try to maximize all of these token builds with War Leader's Call. Now, War Leader's Call gives all your creatures plus one, plus one, which we like. I'm a big fan of this. And whenever you have a creature in the battlefield, you get to deal one damage to each opponent. Well, since we have practically everything making tokens, that's a super big deal for us. That means stuff like Sanguine Evangelist not only comes in and makes a 2-1 one, and 1-1, one, one, also deals two damage to your opponent because it makes two creatures. Wedding Announcement now makes a token and deals a damage or draws your cards, your choice. You know, we are going to be playing Virtue of Loyalty because it makes a token and can also pump our team. A couple of copies of the Wandering Emperor and one Jetmere Nexus of Rebels. Now, uh, again, Yeoman 5's list was playing a Cabaret Charm and I've used this a few times. But I will say this for the deck. If you aren't sure if you want Cabaret Charm or not, another thing you can do is just play something to pump your creatures, and you can go with King Darien Extra Large the Eighth. You gotta say his whole name. But I think that's actually totally fine if you wanna do that here. Uh, but Cabaret Charm can be a removal, can pump your team at instant speed, which is nice, and just puts two more things on the battlefield, which sometimes could be two damage. So it's not a bad card to include. It's just if you wanna clean things up a little bit, you wanna have another solid body, that is something you can do. So. Just want to toss that out there. But overall, this list is actually pretty fun, pretty flexible. It uh, doesn't worry about sweepers all that much because you have so many token generators and you have wandering emperors in here. And if you get your opponent low enough, well, then they have to get rid of your ward leader's call or else every creature that hits the battlefield is just going to be another point or two. So it basically turns every one of your spells into a two point shock, or I guess, that just attack, hits the opponent. So, you know, you play. Resolute Reinforcements, two damage. You play Join the Dance, two damage. You play Sanguine Evangelist, two damage, right? You make tokens from Cabaretti Charm, two damage. And then on top of all that, if those don't get it done, the Jet Mirror comes down and just gives everybody a couple of bonuses. Then you get to attack for who knows how much damage, right? So overall, this is a pretty fun one. I think if you own a lot of the parts already, you should have fun with this one as well. Not a lot of expensive upgrades here either. If you played anything from the last season, you probably already own some Virtual Loyalty. You probably already own Wandering Emperor. Another deck I want to talk about here is Angels. Mostly because the interesting thing I've seen is pretty much everybody's list seems to be within about four to five cards of each other. So 
there may not just be a lot of angels that are worth playing realistically uh we kind of we did get a couple of new ones so we'll talk about those first uh the first one of the new ones that we're going to be playing is wojek investigator this is a three mana two four with flying and vigilance and at the beginning of your upkeep investigate for each opponent has more cards in hand than you so generally against the slower matchups you will be accumulating uh clues i keep wanting to say <laughs> treasure but clues because you're investigating and then that becomes more cards so that can help you keep cards in your hand and keep things going but the, what I like about this is it does have Vigilance. So it's a 2-4 flyer that you can attack with and block with. It I won't say it stonewalls Mono Red, but it forces them to waste a removal card or use something like uh, a Rage or something like that to get past it, which saves you a lot of damage while you're building up. The other card, and you've probably seen a lot of people talk about this one, is Aureli is a Vindicator. This is good because it's just a 4-2 flyer, lifelink, ward 2. So it's already hard to deal with. It does have lifelink. But if you play it face down, then later in the game, you can turn it face up. You can get stuff back from your graveyard to your hand. You can get other creatures that were going to die. Uh, you exile those. So eventually those go to your hand. So you can protect your creatures and keep a lot of things going, which is super nice. So like what this card does in a lot of different ways. And this deck has a lot of life gain, right? We're talking about the Aurelius Vindicator. We have Steel Seraph, which can obviously gain life every time the attack step rolls around. We're going to play enough of lands that we can actually use archangel of wrath which is fantastic and we're kind of encouraged to do that anyway because we now have access to lightning helix which again is more life which means we're going to be playing resplendent angel because now we have all these ways to gain life which increase the odds that that's actually going to happen of course we're going to be playing giada not a surprise there and we're going to play a couple copies of the iron crag in this list to make it easier to cast everything else additionally there are a couple of boon bringer valkyries so you can just pump something later and give something lifelink late. And it is just a big uh, first striker as well if you need it for that. So lots of cool stuff going on with this list. Very versatile. The only thing I will say is for a creature deck, it is a little bit mana hungry, right? You only have Jada early, though you do have Iron Crag, Lightning Strike, or Lightning Helix, and Get Lost. So it's not like you don't have early plays, but you really don't start doing things until turn three. That could be the one downside to this list, but the late game is pretty strong. We're talking about you could have the big Steel Seraph, you could have uh, Sanctuary Warden, you could have Boombringer Valkyrie, you could be spending mana getting extra angels from the Resplendent Angel. So you have a lot of good top decks after a sweeper. You're, you play so many things that almost become must deal with threats for your opponent. So all of this, very good stuff. If you're looking to play angels, this is kind of the new direction to go that I think could be very good for you. But there you go. Those are five decks that get upgraded from Murders at Karlov Manor. My question for you is, what are you looking to upgrade or what are you looking to play? Or what do you even want to see me play on this channel? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're just hopping into Arena with the new set or you know somebody that is, I'm going to link a video here that has a bunch, bunch, bunch of great beginner tips you should check out.